Hey everyone, I love your group. I love what you guys do. I just wanted to bring something to your attention that's gonna save you a lot of time and a lot of money. Data mining is the future. Just give you an overall idea of the problem as, as I'm sure you're already aware. It takes a lot of time to interview these protesters. They're not necessarily comfortable putting themselves at risk. Then you have to have a human process each social media post, identify which ones are relevant to your organization, and at a time like now where, as we saw last year, you know, with the George Floyd protests, key incidents can cause protests to spring up nationwide practically overnight. Twitter's bigger than ever, and that means it's going to take even longer for a human to go through these tweets. So, that being said, document classification system can definitely address every single issue raised in this presentation. Just to give you an idea of the uh, data set that I used in this uh, automation project, as I like to call it, one, one of our sets was comprised of 2,000 documents or manually selected tweets that were classified as political or non-political. Another set was comprised of a thousand tweets that were also manually selected that lacked that classification. Through the use of technology, I was able to explore the first set and find any relevant insights. And I was also able to create a model that would allow you to classify every single tweet algor algorithmically at the push of a button, in a few seconds, I was able to process 3,000 tweets, have them identified as political or non-political with an incredible level of accuracy. My apologies. So just to give you an idea of the process, I don't want to get too detailed in terms of uh, the technical aspects, but the first step in this process was to pre-process, no pun intended, the documents. So after I loaded in the data sets into the software R, they need to be clean before I could proceed. R uses a process called corpus to remove punctuation, excess white space, you can convert text into lowercase, you can create a custom list of words to remove from the tweets, and even better, you can apply all this data cleaning to thousands of tweets in the span of a few seconds. And down below, that's, there's, there's an example of a tweet before the data cleaning and a tweet after in the span of a few seconds. And I gleaned a lot of uh, really powerful insights from the data set. One uh, big insight that I found is that a lot of people in this set were tweeting about rainbows. Granted, not every single one was related to the LGBTQ community, but a lot of people were tweeting about gay rights, about protesting in support of the community. Zombie was also big, you know, like, just be a little bit more humorous. Zombie apocalypse, a lot of people were tweeting about that. And a third thing is people were tweeting about Unicorn Riot. But that's the power of this model. I can go in and filter out this data set so I can focus strictly on the political tweets so I can get insight. And that's what we see uh, below. The political tweets, of course, Black Lives Matter, CNN, Antifa, protests, these are all relevant. These are all impactful. These are all things that people are speaking about as they're protesting, as they're getting uh, politically active. People that aren't political are tweeting about, you know, zombie apocalypse. Uh, they're tweeting about People, you know, just the typical thing. So 
I wanted to uh, analyze this set a little further and take a few terms just to kind of compare to show you how powerful the model is because I can go in and pick a topic and then see what percentage of all the tweets in a, in a, in a data set reference that topic. So for example, Black Lives Matter, pulled it in, found out about 1% of the tweets in the uh, data set were about Black Lives Matter. Obama wasn't talked about very much, less than 0.1% of uh, all tweets in the uh, documents. Trump was about 5%, of course, you know, still being the, uh, at the time, outgoing president. Just wanted to see if Taylor Swift was mentioned at all, you know, just to have a little bit of uh, comparison, 0.2%, you know, a little bit more than Obama, that's okay. Police were mentioned 2% of, uh, in, in 2% of all tweets. So as you can see, this is a really powerful model. It's easy to go in and find out what is relevant to people, what people are talking about, what's keeping them engaged. And I know you might be thinking, like, how can I trust this model? Like, you, you, you're telling me that this thing can go through and analyze human speech and identify political tweets. And that's a great thing. In this model, I was also able to test how accurate it is. And by dividing it into a training set of about 80% of the uh, documents and a test set, I was able to determine that the model is pretty accurate. I mean, 72 to 85%, that's, I would say is pretty accurate for a completely automated process. And it can be applied to the unclassified documents and that's exactly what I did. And the computer was able to go through and identify which ones were political and which ones weren't political. There are also a lot of different ways to model the relevant information. There's different types of dendrograms. There are ways to easily go in and see exactly how many times a specific term was utilized or mentioned in a tweet. And you can also display word clouds. So overall, this model that I just created is incredibly impactful and is gonna save you guys a lot of time and a lot of money. Black Lives Matter, LGBTQ rights matter, and this model can be scaled up to save time and valuable resources by ameliorating the need for human labeling and human classification. Thank you.